Hey guys, here's another video um, we're from GeForce Power Sports, which is GeForceMX.com. Okay, so we're looking at a slipper clutch assembly. We get a lot of questions about that. What makes it different? What are the components um, versus a standard uh, style clutch? Um, so for a slipper clutch, we'll start over here. This is your uh, metric 10 by one uh, clutch bell nut. We have a little a cup here, a spring washer, a drive plate. You have two friction or fiber discs. And then finally you have your drive plate here, a shim, and then you have your slipper bell. So we'll grab a regular standard bell over here and you'll notice it has a spline center which can be driven um, by the transmission gear where the clutch opens up and engages and we move. Um, so what happens though is when you jump and you land, you have a, a tendency to break your transmission gears. Um, so they've adapted an LT80 clutch bell um, which we also do offer a high performance version, uh, Bill of Bell 107 millimeter. Um, but for now, we'll just talk about the basics, which is the, um, the Suzuki Bell right here. You see it flipped over. So there's no drive components in the center. So how does this work? So basically, if you look at this plate, it actually has the splines in here, which is going to take the place of a standard bell, which has the drive components right there. So we'll go ahead and put this together and I'll try to keep the camera steady. We have the drive plate, we'll have a uh, fiber disc, okay, then we'll have our clutch. So we have the fiber disc on the drive plate, goes into the clutch, like this, here, okay, so that's in here. Um, then we'll have to put another fiber disc on top, we'll put another drive plate right here, which hooks into the three recesses and the drive plate there is to drive it. Then you would have a spring washer, which is a conical pressure washer. So when you tighten this, it actually is what holds the pressure on the whole assembly. Then you have the cup, and then you have your nut. Okay, so that's the slipper clutch assembly. The only other thing that you sometimes require is what we call a rear pulley shim. So what'll happen is for whatever reason, if this nut back here that holds the clutch on is either too thick, not tightened, or just some slight variance, um, this drive plate will make contact and it'll become a direct drive. So the clutch won't be able to, will always move, always be engaged um, because it'll hit them there. So what we do is we put a little shim on the back here and that gives it just a little bit more spacing off the transmission gear okay so that's what a rear pulley shim does it just gives you a little bit more spacing uh, between the drive or even a standard clutch center right here and the clutch body itself so let's go ahead and take this uh cl slipper clutch assembly apart okay so we'll have the back drive plate which once again is splined we got your friction disc then we have your clutch bell we have another disc here so what happens is on impact, when it slips, these discs allow the clutch belt to slip without transferring the damaging energy to the transmission gears, which can crack or even crack your engine cases. So once again, we have that drive plate. We have this spring washer. We have the pressure cup, and then we have the metric 10 flanged uh, clutch bell nut. Once again, it's very important. This is the order they go in. Okay, and I know I wasn't able to do that because I'm filming with one hand and doing everything else with the other, but this is how this goes in here. So this would drive this. So once again, you'll see we have the disc and then the pressure plate putting pushing pressure on this. So when that happens, it causes the drive, which essentially is basically replacing um, the standard clutch um, spline center. Well, I hope that helps guys. And uh, one other thing, I guess, before we go, is when you maintain these, these clutch discs are two millimeters thick. So if you turn them sideways, that's two millimeters thick when they're brand new. When they get down towards 1.75 millimeters, you wanna go ahead and get those replaced. Now, part of the replacement also is this spring or conical washer, okay? Um, and these are basically, um, that's what I would recall a, re a rebuild kit um, because this does have you know, once again, it's a conical washer, so it has a pitch to it. So when you apply pressure through the cup and the nut, 
it, it's what applies pressure on the whole assembly. So if this flattens out or does not have enough pushback, um, you could, you know, uh, suffer some slippage in that manner or if the discs get too thin and this gets too weak. So once again, we always recommend in, um, when you switch the fiber disc to go ahead and replace the spring washer as well. Once again, this is G-Force Power Sports. We hope that this is helpful and you have a great day.